Welcome back, Disc Golf fans, to the final nine of the 2023 Dynamic Discs Open here at Emporia Country Club in Emporia, Kansas, a Disc Golf Pro Tour Elite Series event. Final nine holes. Uh, Evan Smith making a push. I'm Nathan Queen, again joined by Nick Hansen. Hello, folks. How we doing? back nine is gonna be a good one i can feel it evan like you said five birdies in a row there to close out that front nine that's what you got to do to start putting pressure on that lead card and try to make a move yeah ricky wysocki clean on the round as well as ben calloway but still sitting there tied for sixth need to get a string of birdies here though keep that string going for evan if he's going to catch those leaders brings us into hole 10 585 foot par 4 brand new hole this year we played a par 3 to a position just on the right last year ideally you'd like to get all the way out of the woods to that second tree line at the bottom of the hill so you can have an easy approach i think forehand is the best play to do that backhand seems to come up a bit short and kind of stymie you behind those trees for your upshot. Looks like a pretty good one there. How do you feel about this hole change? Do you like it? I do. I think the par three last year was a good hole as well, but it didn't fit the course as well. Uh, I think this par four fits the course a little better, although both were pretty good. Callaway up. Choosing the backhand approach. And that's going to be a good one. You're going to get all the way down to the bottom there. Oh, yeah. That's the ideal backhand line there. Pretty much straight. And let that natural fade happen. Saki going with that chop over sidearm. It's tough to tell where that landed, but oh my goodness. Wow, he is out past that tree line. Wide open. Gonna have 220. Yeah. If you could place your disc somewhere, that's where you're placing it, probably. And Joel. Uh, he looked to have a nice shot there as well, but just a bit high late. Now he's gonna have some early trees to deal with. Gets through those nicely. Gonna find himself a circle one birdie putt. Callaway hanging one out to the right. Yeah, I can't do it much better than that. Just in front of that tree and snuggles up right behind the basket for him. Let's see if Smith can grab another birdie and start this back nine right. It's looking like he is going to. That'll be his sixth birdie in a row. 48% of the field did card the birdie on this hole today. The third easiest hole on the course. Joel Freeman. He's able to connect for the first birdie on our card today. That'll get him back under par on the round. And not quite in the bullseye here, but pretty much three tap-ins as Ricky still cooling off while he putts with that little cooling towel. Oh, yeah. Gonna move himself to four under par. Evan Smith. He's gained a six-pack during the round. Oof. He's now six under par. Ben Calloway gonna tap in his birdie. We've got our first diamond. Here we are, hole 11, 395 feet, par three. Slightly uphill, but about 90 or so feet out, it flattens out. You have OB right and left, but shouldn't come into play for these players. Yeah, the OB right can sneak into play, but it's on the other side of that tree line. So have to get a little sneaky in the negative sense to find that OB right. This is going to be a bit low from Evan. Yeah, I think his birdie streak is coming to an end with that tee shot. He's going to find himself probably around 90 feet or so. Callaway looks like to be throwing a mid-range. 
real early, a little low. Yeah, and that's what the shape of this hole is really going to do to a lot of players. Make you let go early, make you let go low. A low floor, or excuse me, high floor, low ceiling type of stuff. And this is in danger of that OB right now. Oh, and I think he has found it. It does get closer up there by the basket, as you can see. And he'll probably be inside circle two, but out of bounds. Man, I know what he's trying to do there. There's, I'm trying to point so you can't see it, but those two trees on the left um, that Joel is passing right now. Ricky was really trying to force something over just past those. But the way that the angle is, it's really hard to get it that far out and still turn it over, causing him to fade out early. Joel almost actually finding the OB on the left side. Yeah, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I I really did not foresee that coming into play. It's there for player safety though with 17's fairway running along that. Oh, come on. Oh! <laughs> As Evan wanted it, he wanted that seven pack. Wow. We've had some great bids today from this card. And Ricky now needs this for par, and why not? Let's count it. Oof. What a great putt. Straddled right up on a tree. That has some authority to it. You can see him shaking his head there. You know, he, he knows he was on that birdie streak. Yeah, when it, it's like one of those things when you're hot, you just want to continue to throw the perfect tee shot but golf is not perfect and not surprised here to see a birdie or a par come along but we'll be on to hole 12 and he's going to have another opportunity yeah and speaking of hole 12 the stats on this one are a bit surprising to me 404 foot par 3 you got OB all the way down the left side as well as all the way down the right side if you throw a forehand, can skip to that OB on the right if you don't commit out left. A low ceiling if you choose the backhand. Evan from North Carolina, very used to hitting a straight line. Gonna choose that backhand and execute it to perfection. Very nice. That'll give him his seventh birdie. Not in a row, but of the round now. He didn't jump off the birdie train for long. Galloway here. This also looks very good. Yeah, similar line, but pulled it a little bit farther right. And it is gonna stay that way as well. Yeah, it needed a little more fade just at the end, but other than that, great distance. Yeah, hopefully stop just short of that kind of octo looking tree there. Mm -hmm. As if you're behind that, you absolutely don't have a putt. And Ricky oh. is going to find that OB line again over on the right side. That's what I was talking about. It can just kind of creep in if you don't really commit out to the left. This is full, very committed. Full commitment there. And uh, does Ooh. fight back in. Might be behind a tree still. Ricky just had to lay up from his OB spot. Joel absolutely hates his birdie. He hated that so fast out of his hand. Man. He's still like, he's like yelling at it as it goes in. Yeah. <laughs> That's a difficult thing. Oh, I wish I could have that. And Ben did stay just short of that tree. He's going to collect a birdie a bit more happily. And a nice birdie from Evan as well. Ricky the first drop stroke.
with hole 13, 397 feet, par three. The o or the drone is flying over inbounds. However, our players are gonna be throwing over that right side over the out of bounds to get to the basket. The basket's playing closer to 450 feet. And I kind of teased you with some stats on the last hole, so let me say that real quick. 35% of the field did get a birdie, but 26% took bogey or above, making it average over par. Wow, that's It was the fourth hardest hole on the course. Could be one of those things where it's a very attackable par three. You've got to the back nine. It's championship Sunday. You know, you're really chasing those birdies here. Is Evan going to end up over on the left there? This is the hardest hole on the course today. Ben's not making it look that way as he's going to creep up inside the bullseye. Ben didn't get that memo as he makes that look so easy. And Joel throwing a Heiser flip. It's going to be a little short left. Give him about himself about a 40 footer. Yeah, circle two is good on this hole. Oh, and a nice lift there as that looked a little low out of Ricky's hand. But he's going to creep up there to either just outside or just inside circle one. Evan not thrilled, but... Yeah, just a little bit of nose angle on that one, and just a bit left. Could have stuck. Not a bad putt. It's kind of wobbly. A little bit, but we see that from him sometimes. So we see uh, Ricky connect there for his birdie. Yeah, nice bounce back from him. 18% of the field. That is 21 players took a birdie on this hole. 15% took bogey or above, but there are more double bogeys than bogeys, and there are more triple bogeys than bogeys as well. Wow. But yeah, if you go out right off of the tee, it's pretty much a re-tee, and from that position, it's never going to be good. I think Ben probably had one of the easiest birdies of the day on that hole. Right. But here's Here. us into hole 14, 975 foot par 5. Easiest hole on the course the first two days and plays that way again today. Your second shot's going to land somewhere in that area right around that stone wall. And then you just have about 180, 200 feet, a little short approach shot into this green. A small eagle opportunity here for some of the players. If you get big distance off of the tee, uh, one way to do that is with a big roller. This looks to be working well, and yep, it's going to turn back, and that is smoked down the fairway. And what a shot. Well down the fairway. Definitely going to have an opportunity to attack the green if he wants to. Ricky going with the turnover shot. This looks to be a little overturned, but... Getting it to fade out for him. Man. He's going to be up there quite a ways as well. Yeah, just two more feet in height, and I think that fades out and gets just as far as that roller we saw. Uh, still an incredible backhand shot. Ricky got tons of distance. A little short as far as what you typically see on this hole, but not going to put him out of position. It doesn't take too much to be able to cart a birdie on this one. Yeah, he's still in a very much playable position. Once again, this par 5 here, just like hole 8, if you throw controlled shots, you're able to put it in good positions to get up and down for birdie. And definitely put a little more on this one, able to get up there nicely into the spot that you'd like to be. Yeah, right to that wall. I guess if you do land maybe 20 feet right of that wall, you're able to see the flag and it slightly improves your approach shot, but small things there. 
Yeah, this is one where I kind of just envision getting it right over top of the hill. And if I do that without touching the hill, you're going to funnel into circle one. Ricky trying to go ahead and funnel into circle one right now. Oh, and he gets it. Yeah, I think he does. He's going to be left. Over top of the hill. Let's see. And, and yes, he is inside circle one, 25 feet, putting for an eagle. Incredible. Oh, ben doesn't like that one out of the hand. And he is going to find the OB there. Is Joel playing the routine shots and finding himself just over that hill inside the circle. Yeah, executed nicely. Evan looking for a similar shot here. Just a little bit of float. And a bit too much stability. Going to push him farther than you'd like to be, but still inside circle one looking for a birdie. So Ben now trying to get up and down for par. Also inside circle one. Should work. Oh, and here's Ricky for his eagle. Oh, and just right side low. It's unfortunate. It's kind of struggled here on this back nine. You would think that. That would be a pretty routine putt for Ricky. Evan also having a little trouble here on this 14th green. Yeah, seemed like it just kind of stuck to his hand a bit long, caused him to release high. Ben Calloway going to card back-to-back -back birdies, though, put himself at six under par for the round. Par for Ben there, actually, with that OB stroke. Ah, uh, yes. He was already at six under. Joel looking to move to three under and catches a bit of the band, but it is going to stay in. Evan cleaning up his par. His Ricky's going to have a drop-in birdie here. Yeah, par doesn't feel too great on this one. There were five eagles on the day, and 62% of the field took a birdie or better. Not surprised there as we move to full 15. 439 feet, OB right and left. If you do not come to rest inbounds, you have to go to the drop zone. Just going to be a big right-hand hyzer for these players. Looks to have put a good move on that, keeping it on a single angle and skipping right inside the circle. Yeah, well executed. Second easiest hole on the course here. And these hyzers are showing you why. Yeah, it's kind really of. just one of those shots where these players all have the distance for it. So if they get it up tall enough on the right side for the right-hand player, it's able to just to fall into the basket. Yeah, at 440 feet, that has about become the standard hyzer distance for the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Has been left this one out a little bit wide, didn't get the stability at the end of the flight. See if Evan can get back to that birdie train he's been on all day. Looks a little wide there. Yeah, maybe a bit strong. It actually goes around the back tree that you want to go in front of, but ends up in circle two, still in bounds. Ben first up to putt. 45 feet. Count oh, it. Ben Callaway from deep today has been on. 
very clean out of the hand, a little bit high, but the the leaf says, here, I'll help you out, push it down. A very nice birdie, going to move Ben to seven down and into a tie for fifth at the moment. See if Evan can match that after seeing it. Oh, and he does. Why not? Catching high right side. Moves himself to eight down. Just one stroke in front of Ben now in fourth place. We've had some stellar play here out of our card. It's exciting to watch. So many more names coming up and, you know, showing up at each event. It's not the same people we're seeing every single week anymore. There's always somebody new that we haven't heard of. Yes, so much talent coming into the sport as Ricky Wysocki, gobble gobble, has yet another turkey on the round, moves himself to six under par. Joel Freeman going to tap in his birdie. We have our second diamond. Sixteen, three hundred and twenty foot par three. Here is your fairway. Don't land on it. <laughs> you want to carry it for three hundred and fifteen feet and land on this tiny little island that you got here. Um, depending on what type of day it was is going to depend what wind you have. It looks like they have a little bit of a headwind, right to left, keeping Ricky's disc too straight right here. But he is going to just slide over that and inbounds. Yeah, that water is not quite glass today, but wind's pretty calm for this area. Joel going with the forehand. And if this has distance, this looks great. Oh! Oh, and he stays on the island. Yeah. Able to hit the base and still stick the island. We saw that earlier in the week with um, Kevin Jones hitting that base and rolling back out of bounds. So good to see him stick that island. Yeah, Joel going to be looking for a turkey of his own now. Ben hanging his out a little this wide. needs to stay up. Uh, a little short as well. He's going to find himself out of bounds and headed to that drop zone. Evan looks to have mid-range, possibly putter in the hand. And just dead straight. Never much fade on it. He's going to have a pretty scary putt or possibly a layup. He's kind of in that 45. Yeah. Not sure you want to run it zone. So. Hey, Ben barely making the island there with that jump putt. Yeah, from that drop zone, you've kind of got to decide if you're going to give it a bid, you need to make sure you give it a full bid. If you're not, make sure you don't hit it. Yep. Don't hit any of it. Just lay up beside it. Yep. It looks like we are going to see a full bid here from Evan. Oh, and it just falls out. No. Uh, oh, man. You hate to see it not rewarded for a pretty good putt. Yeah, it looked a good, like a good bid with that OB right behind it. Sometimes get those tentative bids, but that one looked like a full, strong bid from him. Joel Freeman taps in his birdie. Uh, lone birdie on the card. Gobble, gobble. All right, as we move into hole 17, 745 foot par four. You have OB right and left. The low ceiling shot you have to throw off the tee is crucial to getting down the fairway and into position for birdie. It's going to be a very tricky hole. Yeah, if you don't get the distance off of the tee, then you're forced to play either a layup shot or a big shot to kind of a secondary fairway. Ideally, you're going to want to play over OB for your second shot. So close. 
just a little bit low there. Does get a little bit of carry. Possible he'll have a line to attack, uh, but may be in a position to just try to get apart from there. Oh, yeah. Great job, Rick. So money. Wow. All the way out there. That's the ideal landing zone. Wow. Very tough shot with it being slightly uphill in that low ceiling. Perfectly rose throughout its flight and it continued to flip. Very job. Very good job, Mr. Ricky Wysocki. Evan said, I like that line. I'm gonna clip a little branch along the way. But stay in bounds. He's gonna be in a pretty good spot as well to attack this green. Also very good position, like you said. Ben Callaway here. Wanting to match now after that bogey he just took. Another good oh, one. That also looks nice great. Wow. Oh yeah. Three Gets shots back. that far down the fairway is incredible. Yeah, getting past all those trees is not easy to do. Like you said, pretty low ceiling on this one. Really got to catch the glide of the disc. Joel forced to throw that big turnover to get all the way over to the basket with where he had landed. Stop, finish over there. It's probably out of bounds. Oh my goodness, he got too far. Wow. Oh man, I thought that was going to be a good shot, but just never quite got the finish that he needed. I think he found that OB water over on the right. Yeah, that's um, surprising he got that far, but Evan here throwing oh, a birdie. great shot into bullseye. Ben going to look to follow that up with a big spike hyzer of his own. This looks to be a good line. Good distance as well. He's going to put it even closer. Going to bounce back nicely from that bogey on 16. Yeah, the upshot you're able to throw if you get out of that gap is so much easier than when you're stuck just even... You know, 20 feet short of it. Joel from short off the tee to long on the approach. Going to get up and down for a bogey now. Move him back to four under par. Ricky Wysocki, though, moving forward seven under. Tie for sixth place. Evan getting his ninth birdie of the round. And slowly just trying to climb up that leaderboard. Currently tied for fourth. Yeah, three well-executed, made it look easy birdies there. 47% of the field took the par on this one. 37% with a birdie. And that brings us into our final hole of the weekend. Hole 18, 709 foot par four, got about 380 to 400 feet on the carry. And you got a second shot where you don't see too many people go down the straight fairway. We see some big shots over the left. You will see some go down that fairway. If you stay right, there's a big hyzer into the green as well. Which I think that's what Ricky is playing for there. Yeah, he played almost what looks like a little bit short, right over the out of bounds. Can I be in fine position? Evan here. A good one as well. Another shot where you really just want to get in bounds off the tee. You know, you can play for placement, but really just trying to get in bounds and see what options you have then. Yeah, other than Ricky, I've I've pretty much just seen everybody do kind of what Ben is doing here. Throw that big hyzer, let it get across, and kind of skip up to that big area over on the left. Which is going to leave you more the straight shot or the forehand over top of the OB on the left. 
See, for me, I like to be shorter and right if I'm going to throw that forehand second shot. Just with how my forehand suits up. And Joel going pretty short there. Yeah, skips off wow. of the OB cart path and gets very close to this OB on the right side. Going to have that big hyzer out top over the water. Difficult to get this to stick. The slope of the hill and the angle of the disc makes them like to roll. But that one rolled right to those bricks. He's going to have a tap in birdie to finish his round. Trying to follow that same line. Uh, landing in a very similar spot. Man, they're making this one look easy playing over there. Ben. Ben also going over? Just barely getting over top of those trees. Gonna land it way up the hill on the left. This needs to sit down. No way. Oh, and it, it rolls to circle's edge and curls right before the OB line. That disc knows what it doesn't like. This looks to be lining up over the top left side. Big wide shot over the top. And brings it in nicely inside circle one. We've got four birdie looks here. Ben Calloway up first. Oh, I'm just a little short. Yeah, frustrating to miss your last putt of the weekend, but nice round from Ben. Gonna have himself seven under par and a top 10 finish. Evan Smith getting to double digits Ooh. on the round with that putt. What a scorcher of a round. Way to go, North Carolina kid. Double digits on this course is very impressive. Ricky's gonna tap in his birdie as well there and get the eight under on the round. And Joel, bit of a roller coaster round, but five under par. Well, yep, five under par. <laughs> to, to finish is a pretty good round out here, especially with as many bogey strokes as he added in there. There you have it. Evan Smith, clean 10 down, five on the front, five on the back. Going to move himself into a podium position finish here. Tied for third with Matty O. Parker Welk coming out of nowhere. Getting his first Pro Tour win. Also now the lowest player ever rated at 10-10, I think I heard, to win a Pro Tour event. Yeah, taking out Calvin Heimberg. Quite the showing. Man, what a week we've had here in Emporia, Kansas. Thank you guys for joining us out here at Emporia Country Club. Make sure you like and subscribe to tune in for future coverage. For Nick Hansen, I'm Nathan Queen. We'll see you guys out there.